According to Tesla, Teslas with autopilot are already almost nine times safer than the average American driver. If everyone drove a car with autopilot, we would save 900,000 lives globally every year. And this technology is improving exp exponentially. Let's talk about transportation. How is this disruption unfolding as we speak? So back to clean disruption, my book in 2014, this is the exact same cost curve that I published for 200 plus um, mile electric vehicles. And what I said was that um, over the next few years, the cost of a 200 mile, 200 plus mile electric vehicle is going to drop along this line. Not every EV, of course, there are going to be um, EVs in many categories, right? Luxury and so on, but um, the low end is going to go um, at that uh, cost curve. Guess what? I was trolled. I was told you are smoking something, right? And can I have some? But in fact, it's happening more or less exactly as I predicted. In fact, it may be happening even faster despite COVID and despite many things that um, uh, have happened because society has been pushed out of equilibrium. So, but think about it. Look at this cost curve and think about 2025 or six. What the cost curve in clean disruption predicted was that the market would offer a 200 plus mile electric vehicle um, by 2025 for about $10,000. Think about it. When I made that prediction, EVs such as the Tesla Model S were $80,000, $120,000. The idea that there would be an electric vehicle that was $10,000 ever, right? A tenth of the cost of uh, Tesla Model S at the time was just considered insane. And guess what? Geely announced it. Geely announced uh, a new SUV, um, 200 mile, precisely as I predicted, for less than $10,000. It's a four meter long SUV. I mean, this is a middle class SUV. And it's happening even faster than I predicted. And even in 2014, the mainstream thought that this would happen in the 2040s, not 2020s, right? 2040s. The mainstream was wrong by about 20 to 30 years. Cross curves are like gravity, right? I don't care what your opinion of gravity is. That is settled science for more than 400 years, right? So the cost curves are gonna keep happening. The only question is how fast, not if, right? So now we're seeing 10% um, new vehicle sales um, are EVs in the major markets in China, um, in the US, and in many places in Europe, 10%. And it's looking like an S curve, right? So every single mainstream analyst was wrong. So this is a phase change disruption, right? So EVs, EV powertrains can last 500,000 miles. The gasoline vehicle only lasts 140,000 miles. So um, in, in fact, new GM and, and Tesla vehicles um, last a million miles. So that's three to seven times um, longer lasting than the internal combustion engine vehicle. Now, individuals only drive about 10,000 miles per year. Why would we want a 500,000 mile or a million mile vehicle? Um, you know, it would take 50 years to drive such a vehicle. And, and, you know, we don't own cars for 50 years, unless, of course, you live in Cuba, 
Um, but fleets do. Fleets can drive 100,000 miles per year. So over five years, a fleet car, whether it's a Hertz or Amazon or Uber, um, over five years, they can drive 500,000 miles, which means that over five years, they would need one electric vehicle or three internal combustion engine cars. So fleets now have to go electric for purely economic reasons, right? Because it's already a third of the cost per mile um, of uh, internal combustion engine transportation. And that's even not even considering the cost of energy and the cost of maintenance and so on, right? So this is not a one-to-one -one substitution. EVs are superior. And that's why you're seeing companies like Amazon go all in on electric uh, vehicles. Now, they will say that they care about climate, right? They would say that they care about green, but we know the reality. They care about green, this green, right? Um, and, but that's fine as far as EVs uh, uh, is concerned because EVs on a per mile basis for fleets are already cheaper than internal combustion engine automobile. Um, and for individuals, um, another reason to buy an EV is that you can power your home with an electric vehicle. Um, try that with your diesel truck or gasoline truck. Um, the new Ford F-150 uh, Lightning for about $40,000 sticker price can power your home the home of the average American for three full days. Just think about it. I mean, we're getting more and more outages um, all over the world. But here in California, we're getting outages. In Texas, we're getting outages. And it's getting worse. Now, EV um, is, I, I just talked about phase one of the uh, disruption of transportation. Phase two is coming. And phase two, is when level four autonomous technology is approved by the regulator, is ready and approved by the regulators, right? So we're starting to see um, many companies that have level four out there. Um, Baidu is doing 10, 000, uh, 300,000 rides per quarter. That's what they recently announced. Um, and there are dozens of companies pursuing autonomous technology. All we need is one. This is an operating system, right? And if we look at the history of computing, um, essentially, you're going to get two operating systems. So think about it, Windows and Mac. Um, think about iOS and Android. You get two operating systems because of network effects. Now, you can add a third that is open source, like Linux, right? But no more than that. All you need is one. The first company that is ready and, and is approved, essentially, they're off to the races. And because of network effects, they're going to eat everything. This is not going to be number four. According to Tesla, Teslas with autopilot are already almost nine times safer than the average American driver. If everyone drove a car with autopilot, we would save 900,000 lives globally every year. And this technology is improving exp exponentially. In fact, in 2017, I did the numbers, the, the capability improvement rate. And I and, and my um, brilliant co-author, uh, Jamie Arbib, predicted that by 2022, the autopilot would be 10 times safer than the average American driver. We still have three months to get there, um, but it's just about there, right? And supercomputing power, which is what you need for autonomous technology, is improving super exponentially. So just to give you an idea, in the year 2000, the world's most powerful supercomputer, one teraflops, about $50 million, and it was the size of this uh, theater. 
one tera flop, $50 million, the size of this theater. By 2016, uh, an eight teraflops GPU cost $600. And you could hold it in your hands, right? That's a 650,000 time improvement in just 16 years. That's how quickly supercomputing is improving in cost and capability. And in fact, if you buy an iPhone, a new iPhone or iPad, it includes uh, a GPU, a 15 tera operations per second GPU, 15 for free. And AI is improving double exponentially, not just exponentially. Hardware is improving exponentially. Software is improving exponentially. AI is improving double exponentially. So um, over this weekend, I designed what looks like a painting, right? Um, using an AI called uh, Mid Journey. And I uh, essentially told the AI to paint San Francisco with Denali, Alaska in the background with you know starry sky and so on and this is what it came up with i did this in minutes right uh, from beginning to end creation art creation will never be the same again because of ai ai is improving double exponentially anyone who tells you that we're not going to see level four um, autonomy over the next few years um, essentially is not looking at the evidence, right? So phase two, the real disruption of transportation is what we call transportation as a service or TAS. And it's on demand. On demand is essentially an Uber that you can call on demand. Autonomous and electric um, owned by fleets, not individuals. Why fleets? Because a fleet can drive 100,000 miles or even more or up to. Uh, why? Because a fleet can drive 100,000 miles per year. They can utilize an electric vehicle fully, unlike individuals who only uh, drive 10,000 miles. So when TAS is out, when level four autonomous technology is approved by the regulators, the cost per mile of transport as a service is gonna drop to 10 times cheaper than individually owned cars, any car, even electric vehicles, right? The idea of individually owned cars is essentially gonna go away. 10X has always enabled that disruption. Every single time in history, a 10X improvement in cost and capabilities has always um, enable the disruption and a quick disruption of that. So, um, and in fact, with the million mile EV, this 10X is actually may well be 15X. Um, but think about just the 10X. When it's ready and approved, um, uh, TAS is not just gonna be 10 times cheaper than owning a car, it's going to be four times cheaper than just the operating costs of an existing car. Um, so essentially, if your uncle gave you a car, a gasoline car, um, so you got it for free, the costs of operating that car, gasoline and maintenance and so on, are gonna be four times higher than the cost per mile of TAS. It's over, pretty much, right? Um, and that's going to enable uh, a major phase change disruption. And of course, when I published this, again, trolls said, you're smoking something, right? Not gonna happen. But in fact, um, uh, within a year of uh, me publishing that report, which was 2017, um, Elon Musk essentially said, you know, more or less the same thing, that their cars uh, we're going to drive a million miles, uh, and it was going to cost about 18 cents per mile, 
which uh, puts it are in the same neighborhood as my previous prediction. Um, so the car itself will be transformed from a low utilization, cash burning liability to high utilization, cash generating asset. So it, that's a major transformation, right? In fact, transport as a service is going to be so cheap that if you take the cost of just gasoline, the cost per mile of gasoline is going to be higher than the cost of total cost of transport as a service. So if you add up the cost of the car and the cost of the maintenance and the cost of energy and so on, and you add it all up, um, the cost per mile of TAS total will be cheaper than just the cost of gasoline on a per mile basis. Gasoline is gone. Internal combustion engines, gone, right? And that's going to happen quickly. How quickly? Well, um, we expect that by 2030, 95% of passenger miles will be electric. Um, and the implications, of course, are stunning. So for the oil industry, uh, in 2017, uh, Jamie Arbib and I predicted that, um, you know, uh, uh, by 2030, oil demand would drop by about 30 million barrels, and the equilibrium cash cost at, at uh, 70 million barrel demand globally would be about 20 to 25 dollars per barrel, um, and of course, you know, that was considered insane. And guess what happened um, two years ago? Um, oil demand during COVID dropped to 70 million barrels per day. And um, the cost went down to $20. In fact, it briefly went down to minus $20, negative prices, right? Um, so that is just the shape of things to come. Now, of course, this has dramatic implications, right? Because what happens when we hit peak demand for petroleum? 2019 seems to have been the peak. In fact, the government of Russia said, yep, we hit the peak. We may never sell that much uh, petroleum again, right? What happens when an extractive political system that fully depends on fossil fuels, right, and is also aggressive and expansionist, what happens when they see peak demand of energy in the rearview mirror? They get aggressive. So in a military think tank in 2016, here's what I asked the generals. My question to them, after saying that uh, we're gonna hit peak demand for oil around 2020, I asked, do we have a plan for Russia? Do we have a plan for Russia in the early 2020s? Now, I did not predict that they would invade Ukraine, per se, right? But it was obvious to me that they would get aggressive and invade somebody.